All right, so let's take a look real quick at um, a little info about B. Um, come on a sec. There it is. Live show. Okay. So as I'm, I'm gonna go through this real quick, 39 year old personal trainer, six years ago, she sprained her right ankle and that sort of started off this cascade of events, okay? So after that ankle sprain, she found, and she's sort of like, she's like me, she kind of thinks a lot about what's going on with her body. Um, but she's, she recognized that she was sleeping a lot with her right knee falling open to the side. Um, and so that was kind of putting her hip in a little bit more of an asymmetrical pattern with her right abductor always engaged. Um, she went back to running when things started feeling better, uh, but then she developed some right hip pain and chronic right abductor discomfort and pain. She rehabbed, changed her running form, things got better, and like most active people, she started pushing it more. And when she pushed it, she increased her pace distance too quickly in October 2019, um, and I'm going to talk to her about this because I don't really know what happened here, but she said she could barely lift her right leg. The front of her right leg was chronically weak and painful. She was also developing some right abdominal wall discomfort. Um, the pandemic hit, didn't run as much. Uh, she felt limited by the weak feeling in her leg. Um, 2021, right pelvic floor starts kicking in. There's some tightness going on there. So you can start to see how these things are starting to connect a bit. Um, and so she couldn't run again because of the, that would just like flare up her pelvic floor. Um, but she took it upon herself to figure it all out and did some pelvic floor PT, did some um, traditional PT for the hip um, and was really doing well. Got that um, abductor discomfort, feeling better with some diaphragmatic uh, breath work, uh, did some massage and acupuncture. And she found that the 90-90 breathing and 90-90 hip shifts were the best way to get out of pain when she was having it. So she's done a really good job and you'll see watching her move that um, you'll kind of see, like I was watching your videos and I was like, uh, I don't see much going on here. You're moving pretty well. So we're going to try to you know, tease out some things to work on, um, but she's very active, works out, moving towards heavier weights, walking, biking, running, uh, stands at work all day. Currently, these are her observations. She feels looser on her right hip, tighter on her left hip. Okay, remember everything was on the right side, but she feels tighter on her left hip. Um, left hamstring feels a little cranky uh, and she can feel the tendons going over her right knee. Um, she says she has a hinge point in her back and some rounded shoulders. She has a hard time feeling her right glute in her workouts and that her TFL and QL tend to wanna to take over. And more recently, she's been developing some neck and upper trap tension. Um, and she, she mentioned in her emails to me that she thought potentially that her neck tension was stemming from her like doing so many alignment adjustments to her body to fix these other things. She's wondering if that has put her alignment up top, if it's changed the alignment up top at all and that's contributing to her neck and tension. So we can consider that also, that does happen. Wants to run longer, he looks heavier, and do her outdoor activities. Okay, so here's just a standing. Um, I kind of do a little bit of the homework beforehand so we don't have to go too deep into digging for this stuff, but here's her standing posture. The, the photos are a little bit tilted. Um, I couldn't reorient them, so just keep that in mind. Um, so when you're doing your plumb line, you can kind of just definitely follow the landmarks. Um, but just kind of basically now, if you want to contribute, you can, but what point, if you want to point out any things that you're seeing that are kind of catching your eye, like if you were doing an assessment on her, what would those things be? I'll start. Um, anterior, here an anterior pelvic tilt for yeah. sure. I would say anterior pelvic and tilt. A bit of that drop kind of pump handle position. Yep. So what she um, forward means by a jump pump pump handle is the top of her sternum here 
like so her ribs are kind of flared right you can see on the picture on the left her ribs are flared up a little bit but the top part here is sort of dropped down okay and so just kind of taking a look at that a um, little bit of an anterior tilt um, I would say if you did the plumb line from her like ankle down to her ankle her shoulders are sitting behind her ankle okay so it's almost like she's like leaning back from that hinge point on is kind of like how i see it a little bit with her um so to me if we're talking about the neck thing the first thing i start to think of is well if she's kind of like leaning back from her rib cage to her shoulders then in order for her to like look straight ahead she kind of has to like pull her head forward like that. So that's kind of what I start to think of in terms of postural alignment is if I'm back here, I'm gonna drop this and that's gonna pull my head forward, okay? You can try that on yourself. It works really well so you can see forward, but it's not a great, um, if we can fix that, that should help to take a lot of the tension off of her neck because when she's here, then her upper traps are like, don't go that way and start, there's like this tug of war that ends up happening, okay? Um, yeah. And then on the, uh, looking at her from the front, if we look at the feet, what do we see at the feet? Just a little bit of turnout on that left foot, I would say. Um, so we'll look at her feet more when she's moving. Uh, you can see her anterior tibs are pretty on there um, in her ankles, both sides. Um, you can see her, I thought this was interesting, her, her arms. Do you see how her right arm is like externally rotated compared to her left? Like, do you see how you can see more of her palm on her right side than on her left? Um, that's just, a, that's a definite difference in terms of what her shoulders and her scapula and her thorax is doing from side to side. Okay. Which can put uneven tension um, on her neck. Hey, B, is it more your left neck or, or right neck or both? Um, it's more my right. Okay, so more the right. And it's like kind of like upper trap area? Uh, upper trap, uh, even the front, like towards the front of the shoulder. Yeah. Like above, the front of the neck. Like above like, your yeah. clavicle here? Yeah, clavicle area right there. Okay, okay. Yeah, and she almost looks like she's rotated away from us on that right side. And and I feel a little bit rotated. Yeah, okay. Like that's exactly how I felt. Like I just feel like I can go more that way. So I think it's this is just how I'm compromising with it. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Okay. Cause it, yep, all right, cool. Well, let's move on. That looks awesome. Um. Let's just watch her move a little bit. Here's a squat from the side and front side view. Front view, one more time. Good. One more time, you can see about in the middle of that range, she starts to have to hinge a little bit and bend over. Um, if we're looking at her abdominal wall, since we can see her here, um, she's a little rectus dominant. You can kind of see the outline of that rectus there. So just kind of get an appreciation of that if you're not used to kind of looking at what that would look like. Okay. Um, how do I go to the next slide? There we go. So I took some screenshots because I just wanted to look at where what she looks like in the mid range of her squat versus the bottom of her squat. Okay. Um, couple things to look at. 
how, how is there a difference between how symmetrical she looks from the mid squat picture to the low squat picture? Yeah. Mid More on the one side. Yes. On, at the bottom. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, at the bottom squat, isn't she shifted a little more to the right? Um, on her low range squat? Yeah. I don't know. I feel like she looks more symmetrical on the on the bottom squat. I don't know. You think she looks like well, she's right? It could be. Oh, it's like they're static. It could be the picture. Yeah, it could, it could be the picture, but if I, it, it's probably the picture, but if I look at her shoulder in relation to her knee on each side. Okay, got it. I don't know. Got it. Okay. I was just trying to see what you were lining up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I just, it looks like there aren't as many twists in the system to me on the low squat as there is on the mid squat. So if you look at her mid squat, do you see how her pelvis looks twisted and her rib cage looks a little bit twisted in, in a little bit. Um, um, and my belly button is not centered. Right, right. Like my belly exactly. button is more turned towards the left and you can see more app engagement on the left too. Correct, correct. So she's more, belly button is definitely turned more to the left. Um, you can see a little bit more of a left rib flare. Um, you can see her kind of ab crunching to the right a little bit. Um, yeah, just looking at some of the differences there. Um, it looks like her left foot is pronating a little bit better than her right, but it's hard to tell here. Um, but yeah. Her head is also over to the right in the half squat. Yeah. More so than, more so than in the bottom squat. It's almost like her whole rib cage is getting pulled to the left and she's like countering it with her head going to the right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point, real good point. So what leg do we think she's favoring and more on in that picture? The right. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. I think almost like she's trying to get over to the left, but she's like thrusting her rib cage to the left to do it, kind of. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what it looks like to me. But you know, this is all just about gathering information and kind of rolling. Up. That, please, thank you. <laughs> I don't know who that is because I can't see anything when I'm on this mode. Um, all right. Here she is in a single leg squat. And then she puts the leg behind. Okay, one more time. What side looks easier? Right. Mm -hmm. B, do you know which one feels easier for you? Left. Left one feels easier, huh? I know that sounds crazy, but Okay. Left feels easier, right feels unstable. I know it doesn't look like it, but. Okay, so what did you just say? Left feels easier, but right feels more stable? No, more unstable. More unstable, okay. I feel right feels more unstable. Okay. Right feels more unstable, okay. Pretty crazy, pretty wild, huh? All right. What's next here? Let's look at, I pause these two. Okay, so left looks easy, left feels easier. Right feels more unstable. It's so funny because B, I looked at these still frames a lot of times, a bunch of times, and I was going back and forth on my head in which one I thought would be more comfortable for you. And what I ended up on was this idea that even though her left side has this like 
kind of valgus looking hip and knee. She looks like she's doing a better job of like keeping her center of mass at least. Like, foot. Whereas mm -hmm. I feel like on the right, she looks like she's struggling to maintain that. Having to like, like rotate her whole torso instead of um, just being like, she's kind of like, like do you see how her chest in the left is facing forward and on the right leg, her chest is like leaning in towards her right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it doesn't look like she can hold that good pelvic stability and she's sort of making up for it by having to like, almost like internally rotate her whole body onto that side because her pelvis isn't being able to maintain that stability in that mid range of that squat. Okay, so I'm purposely looking at the mid range here because that's where I think she's struggling the most. And that is when the pelvis has to go into the most amount of internal rotation. And if we look at her, she looks like a narrow infrasternal angle based on her pictures here. Okay, rotation, we're almost done with this and then we'll talk to her. Rotation. You know, like just look at it. It's like, yeah, she rotates well. Everything looks good. Um, She could probably use just a little bit more spinning action in her tibias, but because I think that's where she might be losing the most amount of rotation. Um, but that's just a still of her from side to side. Sometimes I just, when I have the opportunity, I just like to look at this stuff and just kind of see what we can see. Um, it looks like- I see the shoulder rotation is on the right side, the shoulder is more externally rotated. Uh -huh. And the yeah. left, the arm bone is more forward. Correct. So that's sim sim similar to what, oh, I can't speak, <laughs> similar to what we, um, saw with her still frame, like her postural picture, mm -hmm. that right side was that right humerus was more externally, externally rotated and the left was more internal. I also mm -hmm. feel like she's trying to pull in more right-sided neck and jaw when she's rotating towards us on the right, on the left. Just kind of get mm -hmm. that sense like she's trying to a little bit more, okay. Good observation on the shoulders. All right, just a quick running shot and then we'll see how it goes. Which arm is she swinging now? Yeah, she's kind of bracing with that left side a bit, hey? At the shoulder. She's, what did you just say? I'm sorry, I missed like it. It's, Definitely the left back of her uh, shoulder area and her thorax is a lot more compressed. Like she's not able to move that. It's almost like she's bracing up there a bit. Is that just me or? I, I just, right I saw mostly was her right arm going like crazy. And yeah, yeah. As much. So I, yeah, like it's kind of similar to what you're saying is it's like, there's not that fluid motion in the left. Almost like that, and that left humerus is like stuck in that internal rotation, right? All right, cool. It didn't take too long. All right, B, where are you here? Let's, um, so based on all that, how's your neck been feeling recently? Um, not great. Not great. It's been very, I did some, uh, I rolled out this morning my lats and did a little bit of uh, trigger point with the ball just because I was like, ugh. 
Okay. But, so where does it, yeah. where does it hurt? Like just, like, just show us real quick. And when does it hurt? So here, like all, the, all time? the way up. Okay. All the time. It's all the time. It's just, I'm really good at <laughs> living okay. with it. And okay. then all the way up through here and then right through the shoulder. Okay. And how is it? It's so weird because I feel more loose on the right and my left just like, I don't know. Okay. All right. I feel like, but that, that's literally like, it's almost like in, anytime I fix something, something else seems to come up. When you my said- My pelvic floor is still not happy, but- Your pelvic floor is? When you said like you- you suspect still not happy. like some of the stuff you suspect that some of the stuff you were doing for the other body parts and injuries might play into the neck thing. What did you mean by like, like what's like your sneaky suspicion? My sneaky suspicion is because I felt like um, uh, I'm too far forward. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to really work on my pelvic tilt and like being more backwards. Okay. And I, I think I'm just taking it too far. Too far. Okay. Yeah. And then that I'm taking it too far that I feel like, oh, I should lean a little bit more back. I should feel myself, you know, not falling back. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So I think I need to be back. And then, and I can feel it how I mentioned, you know, especially walk, uh, when I walk. I can feel myself reaching and I have to be like, okay, don't do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm trying to figure out where, where I want to go with this. Um, I'm, I'm, curious what, what kind of, I'm curious what kind of training she does. Yeah. Like, is she doing Olympic lifting? Is she, what kind of weight? Like, is this kettlebell stuff? Is this dumbbells? Is it barbell? Is it Olympic lifting? What, what is it? Uh, barbell and kettlebell. Those okay. are the two things. And then I think just was work, just because I have to lift 45 pound plates back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. I think potentially that may be a contributor, but... That's okay. just what I have to do. Okay. And um, yeah. Right. So that's what I do. Again, I haven't done anything crazy. Like I, I haven't even squatted with a bar in probably like over a year. Just because everything felt so unstable pelvic floor wise. And my, uh, my adductors were like on fire. Like I would try to do and they, it would be just chronically inflamed. So I... Haven't really done much. You said your adductors. You haven't. Did you say your? I have. I'm doing very light uh, things. Uh, inner thighs. Sorry. Okay. Thighs. Okay. I just Jeez. want to make sure I heard it right. Okay. Adductors feel tight. Okay. All right. Well, why don't we look at when you say you're trying to get yourself back, 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 what are some things like, give me an example of either an exercise that you're doing or just like a practice that you're doing it when you're thinking about that. Like even squatting, I will just grab this. I will try to really try to think about fall, like I can't even do it right now, <laughs> right. but I'm trying to fall back, but I feel like I'm compromising because I'm not staying tight enough. So that's the things. And then really making sure uh, I pelvic tilt, create some good tension, or like stack ribs and pelvis. And then I'm a very much so overthinker. So I'm always, I'm always thinking, am I maybe overdoing it? That I'm like trapping myself too far forward and with that lean back and then try to does that make sense? Oh yeah, I bet we don't have any overthinkers in this group right now. <laughs> All right, what's your breath work like? Do you feel like when you're doing breath work, because I know that was part of what you were doing, can yeah. you feel like you can get the, the pressure, the good pressure down towards the pelvic floor symmetrically? And do you feel like you can get good expansion of the chest wall, especially up here? 
Or have you not? I can get good air into the pelvic floor. Okay. From here up, it's like, um, yeah, not it's really. Like it's like you can't, you're not connected. Like it feels stuck. Feel it. It feels like it stuck. feels stuck. It almost feels like either uh, somebody's sitting on my chest or I also have some days when I try to get breath into my back and I feel like somebody's sitting on my back. Okay. Got and it. And I'm like, <gasps> obviously not that, but. Okay. So if I had her in my office, I had, I would, I have a feeling I would put my hands on her rib cage and she could probably do this to herself, right? But what I look for is like rib springiness, right? Like I'm trying to decide like how well are your ribs moving? So like passively, I would just, you know, I'm, I'm looking at lateral ribs because the ribs need to go laterally in like a bucket handle um, direction. And then they also need to go up and down. This is the stern, I'm gonna go pump handle up and down, but these ribs have to come with it. So um, usually just looking at like springiness of the ring, the ribs, like how well can they bounce? Do they bounce and are they, they feel kind of springy? Or when you get on them, is it like hitting a brick wall where like everything's just like concrete, okay? And sometimes, oftentimes, when I see somebody who's kind of in the posture she is where she's like got that, that hinge point, but then she's like kind of getting kyphotic into it and dropping through here, right underneath the clavicle here can get really, really tight, like that first rib area. And like all the scalenes attached to the first and second rib. Okay, so that's what you're talking about when you're feeling like neck yeah. coming down in here. The scalenes attached down underneath the clavicle to the first rib. Um, yeah. And so, uh, and a lot of times when you have stiffness in this first rib, you also will have kind of tension and tightness going on in the anterior neck on the same side. Okay. Um, and then your, your, you know, your, your upper trap kind of comes in here and attaches to your clavicle too. So sometimes people can have a little bit of clavicular stiffness too. So there should be a little bit of springiness in the clavicle too. Um, I'm not a good example. Okay. I'm just a person who holds tension in my neck. This is like a brick wall for me, okay? But if it is, then that might be an indication that you're, you've got some tension in that neck. Obviously you do. What do we need to do about it is the question, right? So we need to get her to get these ribs moving so that the muscles that attach to those ribs can, can move, okay? Because if they're locked, if they're anchored down by this, um, oh my gosh, my battery's gonna run out, <laughs> sorry. Um, if they're anchored down by this cement rib, then they're not going to be able to lengthen and come back together as that rib cage breathes, okay? Or moves when it breathes. So what I would have her do if I saw her is I would educate her on that. I would probably do some manual therapy. There's so much fascia in here, this um, pec clavicular, I'm just going to say neck fascia. I can't remember the name of it, but getting all that to loosen up has been absolutely huge for a lot of my clients who present like this. And then we work on breath work to get into it. Okay. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's have you, let's bring you over. Let's lie on your back so we can get a visual of you breathing. So you're going to be on your back with the camera on your side and we'll just start and take a look at what that looks like and see how she's talking about that it just doesn't get a whole lot of movement. You can see me okay? Uh, scoot down a little bit. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's, yeah, we can't see your head, but I think we can see enough. All right, so can you just pull your shirt up to your um, bra line so we can see your stomach? Mm -hmm, that's fine. Yeah, just helps. And then go ahead and take a breath in and just do your like good but diaphragmatic, getting the air down, pressure down. And then let it all the way out. So in her posturing, we're not getting a ton of rib movement, right? With her breath work, she's maintaining very much the alignment that she's in standing when she's on her back. You can see her hinge point underneath her back. You can see her ribs flared, uh, meaning more towards the ceiling, okay? 
Um, and you can see how she's real dropped in here. <laughs> so what we can do is maybe have you kind of open your shoulders as much as you can by pulling your shoulder blades together on the floor, like you're doing a row. And, and it's okay if it pops your ribs up right now, okay? So let's, I mean, yeah, just maybe a little bit less, good. And then that's fine. Just kind of gentle pin them together and then see, let your chin go up. And then at the same time, see if you can exhale the ribs down towards like the lower ribs down towards the floor, like you're trying to get rid of that rib flare. So not just your belly button, okay? But the actual rib cage. And if you wanna put one hand on that rib cage, you can do that or two hands. Um, and just feel what that feels like now to kind of guide the rib cage down towards the floor. So you're gonna let it out. Um, so not towards your hips, down towards the floor, like towards your back from the top down. There you go. Exhale straight down. And you can see as she's bringing those ribs straight down, she's getting it to start moving, but she's actually, she's also dropping her pump handle more while she's doing it. That's what we're gonna try to balance out for her. We're gonna try to find that sweet spot where she can get the rib flare under control without dropping the pump handle, without collapsing through here. And that's challenging. But I want her to first just get started with the idea of how do I get the ribs to kind of come down, 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 down. And then once we can feel them come together, see if you can hold them down there and take another breath and try not to let it go into your belly quite so much when you get that inhale. So you're doing a great job getting those ribs to come down, hold a little tension in the abs to keep them down and take a breath in. And even if it's a teeny tiny small breath, cause you just can't get any more in without your belly expanding, just do that, okay? And with time, you'll start to inch more and more in. Cause what we're trying to do is we're trying to get pressure to go elsewhere. Okay, we're trying to get pressure to not go into her stomach and we're trying to get pressure to go into her um, upper chest, I took myself off here, into her upper chest instead. So she can get more balanced filling of her chest wall and her rib cage so she doesn't have to lose as much of the tension, um, the abdominal tension that she's um, generating, okay? Which is only gonna help create better flow of pressure towards the pelvic floor to get a better response out of that pelvic floor. Because right now she's leaking pressure into her abdominal wall. So she's not getting in as much volume of pressure towards the pelvic floor as she could with that, that breath of the diaphragm and the pelvic floor moving together. Good, so how are you feeling with that, B? Do you feel like you're getting the hang of like the feeling those ribs actually kind of come back and down? It looks good. Yeah, I do. And the reason too, I can, uh, I, why I think it's coming down, I really feel a stretch literally all through here. Like it's a lot of awesome. stretching through. That's so all. I think that's a good thing, right? I think it's a great thing. If you need to put a rolled up little towel under your neck to give it some support, you can totally do that. So you don't feel like you have to hold your head up there at the same time. Yeah. So that's totally like, you can do that. Um, but I think that's great. That tells me that we're making, we're moving the fascia. Okay. We're kind of anchoring it down here so that we can get it to open up here. Okay. Because if the fascia is tight here and we just keep moving it as one piece, we're not really getting a stretch out of it, but if we're able to keep this down and lift this up, then we start to get like a spread of that fascia and it's gonna let those ribs expand into it, okay? This is an area that gets real tight fascially, okay? I remember when I was in PT school and I was dissecting cadavers and we got to this part and it's just this, it's thicker than you think it is fascia that's just like coating all of the muscles. Like you can't even see the muscles because it's just like white until you take it off, right? And I remember them saying like, this is a place that people just get so tight. And I was in PT school when I was young and I was like, oh, I'm nice and soft here. And now I'm 38 and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I've been doing this on people for 15 years. And I'm like, holy cow. So life is my point, creates a lot of tension through this area, talking a lot. You're a trainer, you have to talk all this like neck stuff that goes on when we speak, okay? Let's get you back down. Sorry, that was a little... Oh, no. 
now that you got the ribs thing going on, I want you to gently just try to keep the shoulder blades, like I said, pinned, but not really like pinned, like they're touching each other, but just more open in the shoulders, okay? Meaning don't let your humeruses, humeri, don't let those roll forward, just kind of stay a little bit more open through the clavicles. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So we're just going to let the ribs come down. Oh, good. And then as you exhale, really think of keeping the collarbones open, sternum lifting sort of up towards your chin as the ribs come down. So that exhale, it's really important to feel that you're fighting the tendency to want to drop again. And then Hold the abs in as you get the inhale into the chest wall. Good. And at this point, you could have one hand on the lower ribs here at the bra line, and you could put one hand across the chest. You could pick a side if you want, or you could just kind of get a general feel for, is this expanding? And give yourself some feedback. What do we think of this, B? I think it's working. Good, good. So this is when she's doing a great job. She's not trying to take too big a breath where she's totally losing it. It's definitely hard to keep that sternum up. Yeah. Like, I just wanna like, let it, the sternum fall towards the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so this is just general, let's get both sides trying to fill as much as possible. Now she does have her symptoms worse on the right than she does the left. Are you right-handed, B? Yeah. A lot of what we do these days is even more so in a right-handed world than it ever has been, okay? So most people, when they're on their phones, they're kind of turned into the right looking at it. Um, you know, a lot of people drive with the right, you know, everything's kind of like leaning to the right for a male. So the right side really does get beat up a lot of the times. Um, one way to put a little bit more focus into the right than the left is to just get a little bit more ab wall down on the right, on the left side. So even just like, kind of like reaching your left arm towards your left hip a little bit and getting yourself into like a slight bit of a, uh-huh, just slight getting those left abs on and really focusing on the left rib coming down towards the floor. So right now your hands on your right rib. But if we really focus on getting that left, uh, switch your hands and do it. Yeah, so yeah. And then use that left hand to guide that left rib down. And as you do really open up the right shoulder and then hold the left rib down to put air into that right shoulder. Okay, because the right abs, the right abs will really can kind of exaggerate this type of posturing where that right side's pulled forward. So if we can give her a little bit more left abs, kind of open her up up here, that's gonna create ribs that are pushing together and create a little bit more space and openness on that side and allow more stretch from the inside there, okay? So that's something that you can keep an eye on in exercises too, is just trying to create more symmetry in that department. Especially with like rotational stuff, I find that some people will really like, kind of like drop that right shoulder. Um, you kind of saw it when she was in that right single leg squat. She was like coming over and around it like this. So she was really kind of like twisting onto that right side. So just kind of cueing her to kind of get a little bit more left abs. So maybe we can do that too. Kind of clean that up. What do you think, B? Very interesting. I actually am able to get more breath into my pelvic floor. It's kind okay. of nice. perfect. I mean, it's, I think it's good. It feels like I can get more air in, which doesn't, I don't know, make sense. But yeah. So we're taking the kinks kind of out of the breathing system is how I look at it. Like she can get more air in because there's easier flow through like a canal down her body to get that pressure to go through. We're taking out this like twist or this kink in the system 
and allowing the air to just go right down towards the pelvic floor, the pressure, I should say. Okay, so that's kind of how I look at it is let's just open that canal up. Okay. And I feel like I can get more air in, like it feels like I can move more air in and out now. Even after this little bit of breathing, I can feel a difference. Perfect, 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 perfect. So you can obviously like, we, we can start, you could start to brainstorm into like, how could you integrate this into exercise? What other things could you, like, how could you position her or change her movements to encourage this type of opening through here? Um, if anybody wants to throw any out there, feel free. Um, but I just, cause obviously she doesn't want to sit on the floor and breathe, right? Like, I mean, that's part of it, but like we need to get her moving and we need to get her moving a little bit in the areas that we want in addition to everywhere else. So just, why don't we talk about how, um, let's just do a, like a, just get on hands and knees. Let's just start there. Yeah, Jill, I was going to add in, I kind of relate to her a lot <laughs> and also yeah. had a neck flare up, uh, trying to fix my pump handle. Um, and I just find a lot of the, like adding something under my left hand, like in a lunge, like, like a countertop to push down into, to like Jill said, to get that left ab wall on. Uh -huh. and, and also keep my sternum up and you get like an expansion in your chest at the same time. Yes. Adding yes. that into like your lunges or something has really helped me because if I don't have that feedback to stop me, I'll go down and the head goes forward. And for me, that's helped find that like feel everything stay back and then start to load the system as well. Cause for me, I can do this 90, 90 stuff and feel good. And then when I start to train and, and load the system a exactly. bit more, maybe that's what's happening with you. You start lifting heavier and like everything kind of just, it's not there anymore for yeah. you. Yeah. It's like slowly having that incorporate that into more training. Yeah, for sure. Um, that is a great idea. Cause I find the same thing. It's great when I, I know what to do, but I still can't do the things I want to do. Yeah. Um, do you have a foam roller? I do. Do you have a yoga block? I do. Okay, go grab those. Jill, what were you just saying? You were saying doing like a, a, a lunge and holding onto a counter. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so I was doing, I was videoing myself and I was doing like a split, uh, like a lunge, like a split split squat, yeah. kind of like a, a jumping lunge. And I was using a TRX band and I noticed it was just like pulling me down. And then actually someone um, suggested that I, instead of pulling something down, I push something down and, yeah. and get my chest above the object. Yeah. 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 So, and that helped just get my left ab wall, like Jill said, on to help yeah. rotate me back. So I wasn't fighting that like pull to the right like you are it's very similar so that's why I can relate to you and it just like I have the same neck stuff too it's like um it kind of takes over and I think when you start correcting that pump handle there's something above that and I'm not sure what happens but it's almost like it goes into like <laughs> overdrive because something new is happening above it mm -hmm. um that maybe those muscles aren't used to like adapting that way and then so then they get fatigued maybe faster I'm not sure exactly I'm really curious about this because I can relate on many levels for sure yeah so it kind of yeah. helps me if I'm pushing down on something let go up here yep because I'm like thinking down lower and it just allows things to stay somewhat relaxed so it might be worth trying let's try it uh let's try it on the floor and then we'll try it with like a standing exercise um <laughs> Get that, uh, get your, go turn sideways. I've literally never done this before. I'm just kind of thinking in my brain. <laughs> um, I want you to put the yoga block like, in your waist, like in between, in your hips, like, yep. And then where's your foam roller? Bring that over to you. Yep. And then I want you to put your hands on your foam roller and bring it in closer to you. So I'm gonna have you sit back into your heels more with your hips. And then bring, walk your foam roller in closer to you. So it's closer to your knees. Close, 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 keep coming. Okay, good. Now put your, walk it out a little bit more, sorry. And then put your hands on it. Yep. And I'm one, yeah, sit back more. 
And I'm wondering if you can walk your hands out a little bit more so they're straight, but don't move anything else. So kind of roll your hands out the foam roller, keep the foam roller going. Just keep, just walk it a little bit more so that it's out in front of you a bit more. There you go. And then I'm wondering, good, that's pretty good. If you can put the pressure down, like she's saying into the foam roller to lift the sternum, but at the same time, exhale and get that block to kind of push those ribs back. Just like you were doing on the floor. So get those ribs to come back perfect and kind of push to lift the collarbones up at the same time. And then keep them lifting as you inhale back into them again. And you can reach the, the foam roller out further if that's more comfortable. You can kind of play around with the angle because yeah, like that. So what I'm trying to do is to get her to, I'm kind of trying to squish her, right? Like I'm trying to get her ribs to move back and her chest to get open. How does that feel, B? Uh, very opening through here. Perfect. Awesome. And I'm guessing that's what you want. Yes, I do. Awesome. So this is kind of what Jill was talking about, like this technique of being able to push down, but we're doing it on the floor right now, <laughs> but teaching her how to be able to also now load that with a split squat, for example, or a squat. I find split squats can be a little easier at first personally than a squat. It's just kind of harder on the, easier on the balance sometimes. Yeah. So watch that head. So a lot of times people, when you say lift the pump handle, they'll stay down here and they'll just go with their head. So just watch that if you are looking at this with people because they'll try to fake it with their head and then nothing actually is moving down here. So sometimes you can say like, pretend like you're gonna squeeze like a grapefruit between your chin and your chest and open up through here so that you, you know that they're not cheating it with cervical extension. They're truly getting that chest wall to open up. I can really feel more air now moving up into here. Perfect. So I think that combination as a PT, I, you know, I'd recommend that in combination with some sort of soft tissue work, either that you skin roll yourself or you use a lacrosse ball or like whatever it might be to get into those areas first, then follow through with the breathing after. Okay. That was good. Good. Great. That felt great. So let's perfect. So let's stand you up. See, I told you we'd find something to work on. I know. <laughs> it's almost like a bit freeing like it's almost a bit scary how much air I can get into this right now wow that's awesome okay I'm having a little moment here <laughs> wow okay it's really interesting that what you said because you know we talked about this in, in this course i just did how that position of the pump handle is like a safety zone too so how that gave her that use that sense of like almost vulnerability lifting it up and like emotion response mm -hmm. too is like maybe there's you know life has been pretty hard on all of us lately that that's just also part of it mm -hmm. like a protective a means to stay down yeah, I, don't I listened know. to some podcast. I think it was a Brené Brown podcast, and they were somebody <laughs> on there about yeah, about yeah. like just how posture posturing and our like emotional state, and just how like this is a position of like power, but also confidence and things like that, and then how much this you know we all kind of yeah. Say that. Um, it's just that, interesting how it elicits that emotional response too. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, How's your, how's your back feel? Somebody said it looked like you um, got some spinal decompression out of that. My back feels good. Like I almost feel like my shoulder blades are moving more back. I don't know if that makes more sense. Like I just feel like things are more like this. Right, right, right. It should feel- And I just feel, I feel really, I know we didn't do this for long, but yeah. She yeah. looks so much more aligned. Like her pelvis doesn't look like it's turning to the right as much. Her thorax looks more centered, head looks more centered. Yeah. Everything yeah. looks more centered now. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like almost getting emotional for you. <laughs> this is great, you know? Um, so do you want to try one that's more like kind of weight bearing standing? Type? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, let's get you, um, let's get you up. And I don't know. What would you want to, I'll just ask you, what do you want to try to? 
I think something in a lunch position would be good because I feel like they can relate a little bit more towards running to that single leg work. Yep. Right. And that yeah, balance sure. what I need would I, what would I need anyway? So let's just bring the camera back up. Oh, you got a table over there too. Perfect. Yeah, I have a table. I have a countertop. Okay. So whatever we need. Jill, you were just saying you were just pushing down on that table just with the left. Um, I actually had two foam rollers, so yeah. I used them both. Yeah. And it was useful. Um, how to do this with what you have is um it's hard, but I was gonna say, I'm like, how do I do it at the table? Because she's gotta be yeah. like um, I have two bike pumps. The other thing that you can do is use bands. So you could pull you have two bike pumps. <laughs> well it's <laughs> Very similar to foam roller. It's good. It's great. Yeah. Um, so we'll try with the bump, bu the bike bumps. But you could also <laughs> use a, a double band, and you could like pull down on that band and open the chest and pull. The idea is that we want to pull. You can see I'm sitting with my foot up, um, <laughs> nail busted. So you're gonna pull back, <laughs> and then pull the ribs back. And kind of like that's your starting point is being able to hold that position and come in and out of a lunge. So it's like pull the bands back, pull the ribs in, and then be able to come down without dropping through here. And that's kind of what Jill's talking about is this tendency to want to do this as you come down. So we'll do it like go grab your bike pumps since you don't have bands, but I just wanted to talk about that. It's another strategy. All right. Bike pumps. This is a first. I love it. <laughs> well, I can also grab two chairs. The back of the chairs will probably work the same way. Yeah, I think you'll be okay. I don't know if that, the, we'll see if the height works. Um, so you're just going to stand kind of in between them. Put one foot in front of the other. Uh, like, so get into like a split squat position. Yeah. And then walk your, like, bring your bike pet bike pumps back so they're more in line with your like your back leg yeah yeah yeah. okay so even like that's actually a good place to start if she just kind of maybe put the bike your elbows reach your elbows forward a bit more so yeah can you roll your shoulders yeah. open yeah. yeah there you go there you go can you roll those shoulders open like you did on the floor look up just a bit so no, not so much chin tuck there you go Good. Okay. And I want you to keep that chest open as you exhale your ribs back. The other thing she could do, Jill, is that one where you get like the band around your foot and you're kind of pulling on it, like to get that low, that low lunge. Okay. Sorry. Um, and then from there, tuck that, tuck that back toe under and see if we can just come straight up off the floor without coming forward or back. So like equal equal support on both feet yep keep those shoulders rolled open good pull the ribs back by exhaling good and let's just pitch your hips back a little bit so that you're angled forward just a pinch like you're kind of other way kind of like you're heading into heavy wind a bit okay good open the shoulders there pull the ribs back by exhaling there okay there now with that slightly angled in Come down, good, and back up. Okay, let's drop the pump handles, the whatever the bike pumps. And we'll just do it, pretend you got dumbbells in your hands. Okay, why don't you roll the shoulders open, exhale the ribs back. Good. And you're gonna keep that sternum up with your ribs back. There you go, as you come in and out of this. So you're generating some tension in your lats and your like mid traps and stuff, but you're also feeling abs work at the same time. And you're probably getting a little bit of glute work too. Okay. Okay. Good. And you're also able to breathe. <laughs> okay. Good. So that's just an example of just kind of like, I'm not trying to put her, so maybe, maybe from a training standpoint, I'm like, let's just do dumbbells at your side lunges versus a like goblet squat that's gonna like curve her even more like this, right? So it's like selecting 
um, you know, what kind of where you want to put the weights to generate where you want pressure, because this is just going to round her even more. Um, she could hold a weight here, but I want her open. So if she holds a weight here, I want those elbows out to the side, ribs back so that she can at least get open through the rib cage. Okay. So maybe it's two dumbbells here and she's got her elbows out versus collapsed in here like this. So just choosing smart, um, you know, smartly choosing where you, where you're going to hold your weight. Okay. The other thing I was going to say is if you had like a, a band or um, do you have like a super band or a strap of any kind? We'll just do this one last one. I'm actually going to end pretty much on time. I think something like this. Yeah, that's good. Or do you need a heavier, like a, Oh, if it's a heavier one, if it's something like this. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. So getting back down on the ground in your splits, split kneeling position and put the band underneath your foot so that you can hold the two straps on the side. And um, yeah, that's fine. Um, and then choke up on, a little, on it a little bit so that your hands are actually closer to your ankle and keep your arms straight. So instead of pulling on it in like a row, just kind of hold tension right like that, okay? Then I want you to shift over into your foot more. So you might have to walk that back knee in a little bit. Yeah. So that you're gonna get right up and over on top of that foot. So you're gonna lean into that foot and what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull with your hands and push with your foot and try to drive the back knee off the floor so that you're hold, hovering, oh, uh -huh, and just get low, good. Good, and I want you to exhale those ribs back while keeping your rib cage up. There it is, there it is. But keep your shin driving forward. Uh-huh, so you're still in your foot. And I would have her probably pitch forward just a little bit more so there's a nice vertical, I mean a nice yeah, vertical angle of her shoulder, elbow, and um, foot. How'd that feel, B? That almost gave me more feedback into staying open. As yeah. It was harder, but it was just better feedback because there was yeah. a consistent push and pull on it. Perfect. Yeah. So good. I think I think that's what Jill was kind of trying to say at the very beginning too, is that that feedback of pulling yourself up, right? Yeah. Cool. Um, let's just yeah. see you do it from. Can you do the same thing facing us? I always like to look yeah. at the front too, especially when we're talking about these asymmetries, right? Because if she's pulling on this thing and she's like way over on the right, <laughs> then it's going to be dropping her down on that side. So just do you want the right foot forward or the left foot forward? Why don't you try the left just to compare and see how? Oh, yes. Okay. I think being able to get her to do this well on the left is going to be. A good thing for her. Good. You're gonna get that back toe tucked under. Good. You're shifted into that front foot, so you're gonna be coming in on top of it. Good. Open in the chest, ribs pulled back. Start to push that right left foot down into the ground and drive yourself up. Hold it. Exhale those ribs back. All right. Now you can see you're kind of like leaning to the left a little bit, right? Can you tuck your hips under just a bit? So find Holy. Your just take a break. <laughs> so this is something I would kind of pick away at a little bit just to like get her to really align up and see if we can get like more symmetry on that right side. Cause it looks like she wants to like lean over it because she's not comfortable just sitting into that left hip, right? Cause she talked about how that left hip is really tight. So in order to avoid really like sitting into that left hip we might just lean over there and we're kind of like over it but we're not really in it. Um, so I would kind of pick away at that a little bit if we had more time, yeah. But that's why sort of like this, I just love even though we're here to look at her neck, I just love to know how she got to where she is now because I just think that there's so much value and the, the body is so connected in ways that we wouldn't expect that there's so much value in cleaning up all these other things. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, when I sit into my left hip better, I can breathe into my right chest wall better because I have a feeling that's part of this for you. Okay, so really getting able to like get into that left hip with that exercise in particular, okay? Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Um, 
I think I always thought something with my breathing and where my rib position is, is why everything is happening. This is why I also got the abdominal pain, I think. Because I'm just, when I get tired doing running, when I do longer bursts, that I just end up either being rotated or I end up being too far forward. Right. Or too so I, I think it just screws that up. And yeah. then I compensate up and down the line. Okay. So yeah, I, I definitely think what we did today, just even this and like just finding that shift is yeah. definitely made a difference. Awesome. Do that left side one more time. You know me, I can't just be like, oh, she's leaning to the left, bye. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> so you said pelvis more tucked under, right? Yeah, just a pin. I can't really tell from this angle, but I just have a, a sense. Um, little yeah, more adductor. Right, What's that? You were right, though. Okay, a little bit more adductor on the left. Yeah, yeah, good. Left heel, good pitch in so your your body weight your center of mass is more over that front foot meaning like you're like wheel vertical i want you to like lean into oh, it okay to keep that angle and you okay. should feel your hamstring kick on a little bit more when you do that yeah yeah sure <laughs> you're like yeah i hate this <laughs> it's the worst all right now i want you to go ahead and and push yourself up from that front leg while you're pulling at the same time Good. Now just while you're there, rotate your shoulders towards us because right now they're rotated to the left. Go the other way, right in there. And then this is where I'd have to kind of figure out how I want to get her more on that left side. Yeah, because I'm not, I don't think I'm in my left. Yeah, I can see you keep wanting to wake like, up. I'm, I'm like avoiding. Yeah, you're, you're I'm moving here. away. So you, you moved your shoulders and then you did something else to like shake. Yeah, I, I did this, yeah. and, but I moved this and then I did this. Okay. So I know you're going to overanalyze this. So this is your homework is to yeah. take this um, and start to work on what, take a look at what, the, what you're doing and how you're trying to avoid getting into that left hip. Okay. You might have to breathe into it. It might be a pelvic floor thing. You might be tight over there. You might have to kind of let things go a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that, okay? And then maybe we'll come, we'll have you on for that for that later. <laughs> Keep us posted. All I right, well, thanks so much, B. You are awesome. Um, you did great. And thanks thank everybody you. else for helping. Appreciate it. Have a good week. Happy Easter, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye.